All right, class, first off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. Uh, this video is about imperialism. Okay, this is the very beginning of it. Um, as we go on, it's going to uh, conclude basically with the beginning of the um, First World War. All right, so before we get into that kind of stuff, we got to get from the very beginning what happened. And so here's your warm up picture. So go ahead, look at it, analyze it. What do you see? That's question number one. All right, so look at the picture. Um, usually, at political cartoons like this, um, you can usually tell who made which country the, the artist was from because usually they make their country look good and they make everyone else look wrong or stupid or like a stereotype, you know. So <clears throat> basically, what do you see? You know, each one of those people, which country do they represent? All right. Now, once you've done that, the second question is, what do you think is going on? What do you think the artist is trying to say about these different um, representatives of countries and um, what's on the table there? Okay, so there you go. That's your questions. Um, now we're going to go into the notes. Okay, so if you're still writing on your warm up, continue. Press pause right now. Other, if you're ready to go, then uh, just press play then. Okay, so the very first thing, the one of the major things was the Crimean War. Um, it's not very talk, not talked about very much in the history books, but it was a significant thing because it was a war between Russia and the Ottoman Empire. Now, the Ottoman Empire, uh, we haven't really talked about them too much in our class, but the thing is, they were a very powerful empire. Um, their headquarters, in a sense, was basically in Turkey. You know, what, it, what was Turkey today? Um, and again, they were just very, very powerful. The thing is, by the 1800s, the 19th century, um, they were starting to lose their power. They weren't as strong as they were before, you know, like 200, 300 years ago, even before that. And they started to really lose some strength in the Balkan areas, you know. So the thing is, Russia is like, you know what? We need some uh, warm port, warm water port areas to trade, you know. Um, and thing is, if they got a particular section, they can go to the Black Sea. And from the Black Sea, they can go to the Mediterranean. And if they can get to the Mediterranean, they can trade, they can expand, and you know things be good, looking good for them. The problem was that um, if this was to happen, they would become a major world power, and countries like France and Britain really didn't like that. Now, there, this is not the only reason why um, Britain and France didn't kind of like what was going on with Russia. Um, also, there are some religious factors, but we won't really talk about that too much. But it is, it is one of the things. Okay. Also, Russia, you know, they wanted more land. You know, so the Ottoman Empire, again, because they were losing strength, they became an easy target. You know, if you've ever seen um, the, the, like, nature videos, like when lions or tigers, when they go after a certain animal, you know, when they're in the pack, they don't go after the strongest, biggest one. They usually go for the weakest one, right? Because that's easy kill and or, or it's injured, you know, and that's the case with this. The Ottoman Empire is, in a sense, weaker, sicker, you know, injured. And Russia's like, we have an opportunity. So, in 1853, uh, Russians invade the Turkish uh, Balkan towns of Moldavia, and forgive me if I missay this, okay, uh, Wallachia, all right, uh, the Ottoman Turks basically declare war on Russia. Now, remember I told you how Britain and France were basically, like, didn't want Russia to get uh, too powerful? Well, the thing is, 
they didn't jump into the fight right away. They wanted to see basically, hey, let's see how they do. You know, there were some, you know, talks and negotiations between the Turks and the um, British and French. But the thing is, after about a year, it came down to it where Britain and France was like, you know what, we got to get in there because it looks like Russia might win this thing. So they jumped in. Now, the sad thing is, this war was so badly planned, and uh, because of that, it was so badly fought, you know, uh, a lot of times they would supposed to be in one particular area, and they landed in another place, and people would be marching, 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 and all of a sudden, boom, after marching for so, many, so much, now it's time to fight, well, people get tired. You know, so these soldiers are tired because they're not just walking by themselves. They got uh, ammunition. They got stuff on them, you know, so they got some weight on them, you know. So the thing is, it was badly fought. And um, Russia, believe it or not, actually was losing a lot of people. I mean, a lot of soldiers. And uh, basically made them want to get peace. All right. Now, the thing is, the peace of treaty, well, Treaty of uh, Paris, I'm sorry, was signed in March uh, 1856, and it basically said those two cities that uh, Russia invaded were now protected by the great powers, uh, which would basically be the Ottoman Empire, Britain, and France. Okay. Now, if you look at the picture on top, that's basically from a battle from the the war. Um, if you look at the bottom part, that's how the men dressed from different parts of the world. You know, Britain, uh, France, and the Ottoman Empire into battle. So here is your midpoint question. Do you think uh, it is more important... What, more, what do you think is more important in a fight? To have a strong offense or to have a strong defense? All right. So what do you think? All right, give me your, your opinion. And then give an example to support your case. So if you say, uh, if you use the writing prompt, I believe a strong offense is important because, la, 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 an example would be, and then give me an example, how a strong offense would be more important than a strong defense. And then vice versa, the second way around, I believe a strong defense is important because whatever you put, an example would be, if la 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 it's okay so back up what you write okay in order to get full credit all right now here's the thing um <clears throat> austria it's a country between uh, russia germany and the ottoman empire um basically refused to help russia in fact they actually went against them but austria's they were ostracized, which means they were basically on their own. The only friend they had was Russia. And during the Crimean War, they actually fought against the Russians. So now the Russians are like, well, we're not going to help you out if you need us. You're on your own, buddy. And that's the thing. Um, that type of um, mentality of, you know, you were with us. Now you're now we're not going to help you. You're against us type of thing. That's going to lead up to world war one you know and then you help me i help you you know stuff like that um that's gonna really change the um the atmosphere you know in the in the europe european countries okay um basically they were looking out for their own interest you know now after russia was defeated um they were humiliated I mean, they were just like, how did we lose? There's no way we could have lost. But they did. And they basically just kept to themselves and didn't bother with European problems for like the next 20 years. Um, again, Austria and Russia were now enemies. Um, Austria lost their one good, you know, reliable friend. You know, and now they're on their own. Well, now at this time, countries are starting to feel like, you know what, we need to unite, you know, be together instead of being just little, you know, independent little states, you know, within a country. We need to be one united uh, country. So two countries did. 
Italy and Germany. The one we're really going to be looking at is Germany. Okay. Uh, Germany had two major groups that com combined. Prussia and Northern German, a confederate. All right. So Germany actually tried to unify in 1848 and 1849, but they couldn't. They knew that the one uh, group that could unite everyone was the Prussians. You know, but the Prussians had to want it. You know, they couldn't be forced to join. They had to want it themselves. Now, Prussia's government was a very militaristic country. Um, their king, uh, William I, wanted to make the army large. I mean, really, really large. Uh, but the legislature wouldn't, right? Now, what he want, the re one of the reasons why he wanted the army so large was so that they could, they would attack the country that had, let's say, 50,000 soldiers, he could bring out 100,000, 150,000, you know, uh, basically scare them to submission. You know, look at our numbers alone. You think your 50,000 could take our 150,000? I don't think so. You know, you're going to get wiped off the earth. Do you really want to fight us? You know, that type of stuff. Uh, but because legislature wouldn't give him the money, because remember, you had to uh, pay the soldiers. You had to feed them, clothe them, house them, things like that. You know, especially if they're in training. So that takes money. So William I basically got a new prime minister, and his name was Otto von Bismarck. Now, that's a picture of him right there. As This is when he's a little bit older. Um, now, Bismarck was had a unique uh, sense of politics. You know, he realized that it didn't, um, it needed to be focused on how real life is and not, you know, well, if you do this and you do this, if you do that, then this will happen, you know, or ethics, you know. So the whole, like, you know, if you give respect to somebody, they're supposed to show you respect. But in real life, you, you know, some of you guys may know, if you show respect to somebody, sometimes you don't get it back, you know. And sometimes uh, someone shows you respect, sometimes you don't give respect to that other person. You know, that's real life. And so that's what he said. The other thing was ethics, you know. Should you um, attack... A, I don't know, a, a woman with a child, you know, and ethically, no, you're not supposed to, you know, um, but if she has a gun, you know, pointed at you, you know, what are you going to do, you know, and that's his thing, he's like, well, we should look at, in, look at this in real life terms, not what it should be, or, or you should do this because of this, you know, so that was his main thing. Well, either way, he got the money for the army. Okay, and basically ignored the legislature. And the thing is that Bismarck was very smart. He knew that the other German little country things, um, the states, they didn't want to join Prussia for their freedom. You know, like, oh, we want to be free. So we should unite. You know, he knew they wanted to join Prussia because Prussia had the power. They were up here when it comes to power and everyone else combined is like right down here. You know, there's a there's a big gap difference. So one place and then the rest of them, you know, down here. So he that's what he knew. And he was like, yeah, you guys need me. You need us more than we need you. <coughs> Sorry. And that goes to your question now. Have you ever been in a situation where someone needed you more than you needed them? You know, if so, when and what did you do? If you've never been in a situation like that, you know, um, what would you do if you were in a position of power and weaker people asked for your help? What would you do? You know, you have the capabilities, you have the means to help them out. What do you do? 
do you do it? No, yes, why, why not? You know, um, so if you've ever experienced it yourself, tell me about it, you know, and, and, and what did you do? You know, if you want to go a step further, uh, what was the outcome? You know, did you, uh, was it family? Was it friends? What, what happened? Did, are you guys still close? Did after that, did they just like forget your name? You know, what happened? Okay. So once you're finished with this, you are done with this packet. Uh, be sure your name is on it. Okay. Double check. Make sure your name's on the packet. Uh, be sure you circle, you know, uh, fifth period, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday. And that's it. Okay. So be sure when you're in class, you turn in the basket, the work into the basket. And we're good to go. Okay. So hopefully you learned something new today. And I hope you guys have a good day. All right. So take care and be safe.